you know, I complained about the books and then the, the revolution started and, and we wanted a new Dunbar. We needed a field. We needed a new school. You were teaching there? Teaching there. And you eventually made it to vice principal? I made it to, I had a no, department head at Lombard. And I saw your picture on the wall at Dunbar when I was there, though, didn't I? Yeah, I was principal of the evening school. Okay. I know I saw your picture. Yeah, I saw yeah. Senator Blount, but I, I, in high school, I saw your picture yeah, on the I, wall. I, I, was, I was the evening school principal. and Why was evening school important? Because people had to work? Yeah, adults. I had older adults, young adults, and then kids that would act up in school. I had about, got to be 1,500, 2,000 students. That's why I like um, um, evening schools. They, when they got rid of them, it was horrible. People go back and finish their high school diplomas. What do you think now when you hear people say not everybody's made for college? Some, some of that is true. We call them community did, 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 Was that the verbiage in your day growing up? Not everybody's meant to go to college? Some, you didn't say it, but you had three choices when you graduated. College, military, or work. You took it out of my mouth. That's what my mother said. At 18, you're leaving. That's it. They College, go. military, or work, but you're not staying here. Pick one. That was it. She, so bat you, 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 she, you. she batted four for four. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 20 years old. Uh, before you, it was the same. She did not when play. You turn eighteen. Don't embarrass this family. Get, Don't get locked up because ain't nobody just, coming to see you. I just said it. My brother got locked up one time running with his boys, and uh, I said, oh, "Mommy, he was in a car, and he, his buddies were in the car, and they he didn't know it was stolen, and they had him around on Edison Highway locked up and say, well, that's where you're gonna sleep tonight. I'm not going. I gotta go to work." No do you remember a lot of people getting locked up during the 68 riots? Oh, yeah. Was that the scariest Leveson day of your lifetime? Klein at Muir Street. At, and on Kenwood Avenue was a big Leveson and Klein warehouse. And they broke into the warehouse and was taking everything out of there. Color televisions, refrigerators, everything. Oh, yeah. It burnt up Monument Street. Was it the worst day Street. ever? W were you, I mean, like when I saw we, Freddie we, Gray. We, we couldn't go out. My mother was, you're not going out there, period. You stay in the house. I said, but they getting televisions and stereos. And Senator, I remember coat hangers with steel wool affixed on fire being thrown through the air in East Baltimore. Right. I remember tanks coming up North Avenue. Tore up Gay Street, North Avenue, all of it. We used to have on on Milton Avenue, um, five and ten cent store, all that stuff. Edison Highway, um, markets, and all of that. Yeah, it's just just different. It's gone. After the riots, it was gone. St. Catharines, I told you, all the Catholics left. And subsequently, Greater Gethsemane, first of all, minute for the East Side Baptists, that they moved it. The building was so large, they moved to a small portion on the, the western side downstairs for another church, East Side Baptist, and uh, then Greater Gethsemane came. Senator, they, I've been told that my grandma said in 1950, don't go to Johns Hopkins. Don't, don't, don't lay down anywhere in East Baltimore. You end up in, a, in an experiment. Henrietta Lax's family moved from Turner Station to the 2600 block of Biddle Street, East Biddle Street. They were our friends. I sat in the house. Cowboy was out contemporary. There was a bunch of them in there. I did not know all of that until I became an adult. I said, Cowboy, that's, 
the mother. I saw them all on television. I'm looking at television, I say, oh my goodness, that's Henrietta Lacks. She moved from Turner Station. See, a lot of people left Turner Station, they came right up to East Baltimore. How did they get into Turner? I mean, how did they end up, how did they start there? What was, why was Turner Station the place? I know Quaisi lived there, there, didn't he? Ah. Uh, Glenn Middleton. There for work, they the box. moved close to work. Well, they, they all lived down there, but people started dying of cancer and it was tough. And see, back then it was segregated. So the 20 bus would run down Dundalk Avenue and all the whites where the shopping center is, that was it. And the last bus would go into Turner Station. My um, godmother, William Wade Way, down there, Day Village. That's where all the black, all the blacks, um, and all the little, they had their own schools and everything. But, you know, when they, they started moving to East Baltimore. But back then, there were no blacks on the east side of Edison Highway. That was the border. There were no blacks below the railroad tracks at Burl Avenue in East Baltimore. That was the boundary. Same thing we lived in the projects, like I told you before. No blacks lived on the other side of Pratt Street. That was all Italian. You couldn't go live there. You could go buy something and leave. On the other side of Broadway, that's where all the poles were. They had their neighborhoods. You go all the way up further, the Greeks had all their neighborhoods. Everybody had their little neighborhood. <laughs> and back then, the city was divided. The Irish controlled northeast, northeast Baltimore. The Jews controlled northwest Baltimore. The uh, uh, Germans control southwest Baltimore, McGurkin now. The Italians, southeast Baltimore. Maybe Harry you know. McGurk, Jack Pollock, those names. Jack Pollock, Jewish guy. He had all his businesses around Baltimore Street. He's the money man. So Jack Pollock was the money man for the whites and Jews, and Little Willie was for the blacks. Jack Pollock and Little Willie worked together. Well, he had my money talk. Read the book, they call me Little Willie, it's in there he had money and back then you know it was the numbers and if you needed money the black the banks didn't give you loans so you had to go get a quarter on a dollar to somebody you asked me how they got those shoes well people started hustling early and Willie started in East Baltimore did not know that oh yeah Willie started in East Baltimore Reggie Lewis's mother started in East Baltimore. Reggie Lewis was the quarterback for Dunbar's football team. And the center was Tiger Davis. Reggie, I did not know that. Reggie's best friend is Robert MacBell. Chief Judge. Chief Judge. Remember when we were coming up to be the best. They were saying on the west side, they, they were all that in a bag of chips. We were just working. We had the, we had the richest person in uh, in uh, in America that was black. We had Reginald Lewis, Dunbar High School. Then he went to West Virginia State. Became a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Wealthy, bought Beatrice. He used to negotiate on the phone. Uh, they didn't know he was black till he showed up and signed the papers. Oh shit, he's black. He always sent, wired his money in, signed the papers and he owned the corporation. Then he wrote the book, Why the White Guys Have to Have All the Fun. Read that years ago. Come right out of Dunbar High School. Bell. You know, you you got to, I need five minutes on you. When you, well, they said I emceed it, but I would say I co emceed it. I only no. repeated what you told me. You shared so much history at that reunion out there at Martin's East. East. Yeah. 
I mean, you knew, you, not only did you know the people, you knew the mama, the daddy, the brothers, the sisters. So let's start, what was his name, Honeycut? Uh, the one who's on Wall Street. Turnip Seed? Yeah, turn, call Turn Turnip Seed. Turnip Seed, that's his name. Uh, uh, Federal Reserve. He was a Dunbar poet. Yes. Dunbar and Morgan, he was on the Federal Reserve Board. Hmm. He had another one of my frat brothers. Van Eaton, I we grew up in Flag House Project, one of the first at IBM. They started Gatsby on Charles Street. That's the way I met my wife. Black club for middle class black people. And Pee Wee, Odell started around the corner for the younger blacks. So the younger blacks had Odell. Pee Wee Brock, his father owned Brock Fuel Oil Company. We got his money from. And then back then, all we did was go to Cars Beach and Sparrows Beach. That was our beaches. Where was Sparrows we Beach? Like, right next to it. Okay. And these are Anne Arundel County? Anne Arundel County. Arundel on the Bay. That's where Kurt Schmoke lives now. Nice on the Bay. But that's not new for blacks to live out there in Anne Arundel. No, it lives, it's a... Before. Rich black enclave old, out there? Whole enclave out there. Here's what I'm telling you. You watch. One day Cherry Hill is going to end up with big, beautiful condos and everything. Sitting on that water. Will black people live there? If they have money. We may not be around, but it's coming. Where do you see black people going I see, in Baltimore? Because when they did that Port Covington thing, I said, oh, Lord, they didn't drop it. Drop the ball? No, they, did, they, did, they didn't drop it. They're going to do it. They have, all that stuff down there is going to be gone. And you wait till they build all that out. People got to live somewhere. They can't live in all those condos and apartments they're building. They're going to want a house over there. I knew when they put the yacht club down there. Ain't no black people got no damn yachts. So what are you doing? A yacht club now about your area. But this is 30, 40 years 30, before I, this. I, exactly, because they have time. They have time on their side and money. And it's a generational thing. It turns over. Okay, so you... Same thing with Reservoir Hill. Reservoir Hill is slowly turning back all Akintrali Terrace. That was all those wealthy people along. Uh, and the, and I remember when the water would spray out with different colors for, for, and all like, oh, come on. The Friends of Druid Hill Park used to be like 50-50 black and white. It's got to be 95-5 if it's that much. So for all of your years of service, where are we? You pushed the envelope. You were told early on, you know, to be mindful of the red, black, and green. Yeah, we are. You're radical, but you grew up with the richest black man in America, Reginald Lewis. You saw possibilities. You saw limitations. You saw hatred. You saw love. I, you know, I, I, I keep going back to my faith. God didn't bring us here to leave us. He didn't. Um, he showed us the light. I am uh, involved with two major projects. Right now is the um, Mary B. Harvin with the Southern Baptist Church. You know, we built the, the, the Harvin Center down there. Who is she? She's one of our church members. Okay. You know the thing that burnt down during the Freddie Ray Rock? We had to build it back okay. up again. Hickman, well, Hick, all Dante that Hickman, property. yes. Yeah, that's us. Okay. That's us, Arnold Williams, me, him. Arnold Williams, too? Arnold and I have been in the church for, he'd been there for longer than I had. Abrams, Foster, Nolan Williams, right back here. He, he, that's my accountant and my financial advisor advised me on all of this. You know what I mean? This was apartments. This was, uh, you know, this, this a condo. 
99 year old white woman with walls all over the place. And my wife watches TV, what is it? GTV or whatever that thing is. And she wanted to design a house like she sees on it. That's what she did. I had to, and this was the way we retired. Instead of living in a senior building, she wanted to build out her own. So she gutted the place out and rebuilt it. You, you earned it. But tell me, where, where are we now? Where are we today, 2023? Are you, are you pleased? Troubled, I'm troubled by the lack of respect. Um, I'm troubled by low ambitions. I'm troubled by young people that feel that they have no other alternative. Um, 15, 20 years ago, I would hear young people because I was close to the school system and they would say, Mr. McFadden, I'm not going to live to be 30. I 20? Gotta, I, 20 or 30. I got to get mine now. So after Vietnam, when they dropped the drugs in here, that was it. And now we're killing each other. I must say, back then, it was Honor Among Thieves, the West Side Boys, Melbourne and them had their little thing, and Peanut, you know, whatever. I don't want to call so many names, but it was organized. The Jews had this. The, I must say the Italians. Everybody had their little thing. Uh, and you respected that. Now it's the wild, wild west. No rules, no, no respect. No rules. And so you got people running around here with these guns. You can, you can uh, uh, pick up your computer and go buy a gun. And then it, you... Shooting or the people. drugs are online. Same thing. You're shooting people in the head. That's called execution. And, and young women. Our, our That's women. execution. You understand what I'm saying? My wife and I had an appointment today, and we're riding up Monument Street, and at Monument and Caroline, go by there. Somebody shot out the bus stop, all the glass all over the place. So stuff. your time, your service, your years of fighting for us, in, on the Baltimore City Council, in Annapolis, at the State House, in the State Senate, was it worth it? Absolutely. And you know why it's worth it? Because I had an opportunity in 2008 to be a, um, I was a delegate from the state of Maryland for Barack Hussein Obama. And I got a chance to vote, boom one of the votes to make him president, okay? I was able to be a part of uh, another good friend of mine by the name of Wes Moore. Several times I wanted him to get a local office and ran, he didn't want to do it. And you're, 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 you're speaking of years ago. Years ago. You were a new fan. This this is no, no, well was, over a decade, maybe yeah, 15 yeah, 10, years 15, ago. 15, 20 years ago. We had conversations with Wes. His wife used to intern for us, Don Flight, University of Maryland. She, she interned, interned for who? Senator Maryland. The Senate. The Senate. Did she, she advised KKT at one point, didn't she? She did a whole bunch of stuff. That woman, it's like I said, uh, she and... Um, she's a political Michelle, mastermind. She's like Michelle Obama. No question. You're going to see what's coming. No question. But but it was that and the work we had, we were able to do through the Eastside Democratic Organization, uh, uh, founding the East Baltimore Community Corporation. that's still around one of the oldest black community corporations in the country. It still exists. So the hope is out there. It's just that uh, some of our young people, and, and because of all this technology, they don't communicate. They don't talk. Senator, they don't, do you want me to send you a text if I need to get in touch with you, or do you want me to call you? Call me. Did I call you last night? You called me. But we live in a day and time where the texting is normal. Oh, my grandchildren sit there and text each other sitting there. My granddaughters, that's how I learned all this stuff. Now, I don't know how to do this stuff. You holding a little camera there. My wife did it for me for some of my exercises. I don't have 
no clue about what she was doing. What she do we just press the button and hold the button? So how do it's what? that interpersonal relationship? When you talk to somebody, you can feel them, you can see them. You know what I mean? And when you talk to them, like when I talked at that uh, reunion for Dunbar, that stayed with you longer than being I'll never forget on, it. You knew everybody. On Facebook. You understand what I'm saying? And it comes from memory. But the older you get, the, you kind of forget it. But that's how you were taught. You had to know that. You had to know who lived there, who lived where. Who, who impressed you in Annapolis? Clarence Blount. Back home, Clarence Stu Burns. Those were my rock. In the neighborhood, Samuel Thornton Daniels, Prince Hall Grand Lodge, Nathaniel Higgs, Southern Baptist Church. Um, uh, uh, yeah. In, in Annapolis, That's you cool. also remember, now Baltimore, I would imagine at that point was the largest black jurisdiction in the state, but you watched Prince George's County evolve. I imagine you watched them get their first black representation. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Watch I went, went through what all of those guys. Uh, we still have one of the largest, in fact, right now we still have the largest black caucus in the country, over 60 members. So you remember Bear, C3, C3, I remember oh, yeah. one thing he said that the, the small number of you he, he did more than... He water all and did more than a whole bunch of these guys did that. He said it was like 11 of you, not many. No, it was just small. I came a little bit after them. Was Hattie and them on the, on the, on the house. Side. But a handful. Now we got, now we all way up to Governor. That's where, I, that's where I was going with it. We up to not only governor. Treasurer. Treasurer. Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House. And the uh, and the uh, Attorney General. AG, yes. There are no white men on the Board of Public Works. So First Senator, time in the history of the city. Senator, of the state. Senator what, what does that Mitchell's, mean? Michael Mitchell's favorite, I'll never forget it. We're like beggars sitting on bags Beg of gold. Michael Mitchell first coined that. That's, what I, that's the first time I heard it. We are like beggars sitting on bags of gold. So we should be on our way now. Yes, sir. What should we be pushing? Education. Okay, we've been pushing education. $15 no, billion. Gotta, dollars. You got to keep pushing. You got to. You got to go back to community schools for people that don't have their high school diplomas. How can how can a an adult help a child when they don't understand all this complicated math and all that kind of stuff? How can you help your 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 child with an SAT or ACT or anything like that? Cause they doing it all with this mechanical stuff. How they don't understand that stuff. Gotta go back. And you asked me before, not everybody's going to college, but you know, Wes is coming up with that service thing. That's where they headed. You can do something. I know that much. I know my mother, your mother said you're not gonna stay around you're here. You're not gonna stay gonna do something. But now we got 70% single mother households. Carver not... Vocational High School. Man, that was the rock. Carver put them out. In, in tailors, tailors cobblers, carpenters, carpenters. Uh, car repair, uh, cosmetology, the nails, electricians. The, electri you go back to all those things. Have we gotten soft as a people? Do we not want to work in? I mean, it seems like a lot of people just want to stay home, not work nowhere. They got this continuous welfare mentality. Somebody owes me something. Yep, it's the flip side of slavery. What do you mean? The flip side. Slavery, everything was given to you. Once you work real hard. And now we got people that are on welfare and think that they can stay there forever. It's an entitlement. You yes. get your health care, get your food. I'm going to ask you a mean question. This is a mean one. Have the Democrats made us lazy?
has the democratic mentality no softened us. No permanent friends, no permanent enemies. Only permanent interests. Only permanent interests. And if, the, if, if certain segments of the Republican Party weren't so racist, we should be on both sides. They on both sides. When them big boys are given, they spread it out. But look, we're not even the number one ethnic group. I don't like the term minority, but the Latinos didn't jump past us. They didn't flew past us in terms of numbers. Thank God. We still have political representation. It's gone. But it's just a matter of seconds they before. They're starting all their organizations. They, and they, they, all, all of Southeast Baltimore, they're taking over. I go down Broadway, I see businesses. That's what I said. Yes. Why don't we have businesses like that in our neighborhood? We want to move. And it's okay to move, but you said don't sell grandma's house. You said that when I came I in the know. door. Don't sell mamas. We don't sell our houses. We don't sell our houses. They, we used to have little businesses and everything. Now everybody frying chicken but us. That's correct. Get a chicken box and a half and half. That's the mentality. Right through. People 20, 30, 40 years old standing on the... No, no, the ones that disturb me are 20s. Teenagers, 20s, on the corner. In the 40 years the old dying from a stroke because they never ate a Brussels sprout or a she, string uh, bean or a piece of cantaloupe. Four or five kids squeegeeing all day long when they should be in somebody's school. Back then we had truant officers. Come by, you got to be in school. How you gonna about that? How you gonna be at Mount Royal and and North Avenue at eighty three all day long in the middle of the day? You remember Violet Hill White, Pennsylvania Dolphin. Who was she? Hook school one day, Sergeant Viola Hill White. And you go there, and that was your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the bejeejees out of you. And uh, we hook school, go to girls, trying to get a little something, but we wasn't doing anything. But my mother found out, because back then. It was faster than the internet, oh, the network. Lady look out the window. Jimmy and them didn't go to school at that. We got home. How was school at that? Oh, it was good. <laughs> Come go with me. Got on the bus. Go over to Pennsylvania and Dolphin upstairs to see Violet Hill White. Everybody sitting out there sweating bullets. I know the blood pressure had to be up. They were sweating. I saw a picture of her with Muhammad Muhammad Ali. She, she was the lady. I got the first see. black police officer in Baltimore City. Violet Hill White. That's all you had to say. What yeah. happened to that? In our community. What happened to the us? Black officers crack down on you. They ain't get you in trouble. They whip your butt if something was wrong. You just wrap a towel around the, uh, the uh, club. And, oh, I see. You know, I used to say when I was teaching, can't do that anymore. Now, uh, do you, uh, you know, you want me to handle this or you, you want me to call your mother or and back then, I knew them all. See, I come out the projects. I come out of East Baltimore. So, look, you, you fought. You and your colleagues worked hard, fought hard. We now have a black governor. But have we also given up on ourselves? I mean, he, he, has, he has a difficult job because he's dealing with a whole generation or two or three of black people who have no respect. That's right, he has a vision. And How's he, that going to work? He, he's just one cog. I mean, like I said, God didn't bring us this far to leave us. And he dropped them down here. And if we get things right in this city, we can turn it around. We got to get it right. 